Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a trigonometric equation uh, when you have to use this sum and difference formulas. And basically, like all of our other identities and formulas, whenever you see you know, the sum or the difference of two angles um, for a trigonometric function, I automatically think, well, let's plug in what the formulas are for the sum and difference formula. So it would be very important to make sure that you either have the sum and difference formulas in front of you um, or that you make sure you have them memorized before taking a test or a homework because I have them written down because I don't remember them because I'm teaching during the summer here. Uh, so I wrote them down to make sure that I had them correctly. And you can see on both equations here, that's exactly what I have is these sum and difference um, formulas. You can see they're also set equal to a number rather than set equal to 0. So factoring might not be our best bet. But what we're going to do is rewrite them using the formulas and then try to simplify them as far as we can and then see what happens. So using the sum formula for sine of x plus sine of pi over x or pi over 6, it's going to produce sine of x cosine of pi over 6 plus cosine of x times the sine of pi over 6. Make sure when you're doing this, you use parentheses. I'm going to use a bracket here just to distinguish it. But make sure you really separate that out because you're subtracting the whole thing of sine. So now I'm going to use the difference formula, which is going to be the exact same thing, um, except I'm going to subtract my between my two values. So if you give me cosine of x times. And I'm, you can see I'm even like breaking into the other problem. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of work to be writing down there. But what's nice about this formula is you can see that now I have the cosine of uh, pi over 6, sine of pi over 6, cosine of pi over 6, sine of pi over 6. And I can evaluate those for a value. So to do that, we need to go into, well, let's go back and look at the unit circle and see, all right. So if I have the angle pi over 6, the, court, the point where that crosses the unit circle is the square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. Now remember, cosine represents the x-coordinate and sine represents the y-coordinate. So therefore, here, the cosine of this is going to be uh, square root of 3 over 2. So I can write sine of x times the square root of 3 over 2 plus here, now I'm going to do the sine, which would be 1 half. So it's cosine of x times 1 half. Now, I think it'd be very important to make sure you distribute the negative sign. So therefore, I can distribute that to that and that. So that means that's going to be a negative, And then this is going to turn into a positive, because minus a negative will turn into a positive. So therefore, I'll write those in blue just so you remember that that's what I did that. So that becomes a negative sine of x. Now again, cosine of square root of 3 over 2, which is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. And then this is going to become a plus. And I have cosine of x and then times 1 half equals 1. OK, so what's nice about this, or what's very important about making sure you distribute here, is you can see that these are the exact same expressions. One's positive, one's negative. Well, they're going to add to 0. So therefore, I'm left with cosine of 1 half times cosine of 1 half. That's going to leave me with 2 cosine. Uh, times 1 half, oops, cosine of x, is equal to 1. Okay? You could also um, just say 1 half times 1 half is 1. Cosine of x plus cosine of x is 2. But you can see that those divide out, and you're left with cosine of x is equal to 1. So basically, now we need to figure out all of the solutions where cosine of x is equal to 1. Over here, we're saying the sine of pi, you know, the cosine of pi over 6. Basically, what it's saying is, what is going to be the x coordinate of where that angle crosses the unit circle? That value is this. Here, though, my x is here. So we're saying cosine of what angle gives me 1? Or the better way to understand that is to um, undo taking the cosine of the angle by using the cosine inverse. So therefore, that'd be cosine x equals cosine inverse of 1. But again, the, ex the answer is exactly the same. Cosine of what angle equals 1? Now again, that angle has to be between 0 and 2 pi. And we're going to find as many angles as we possibly can. Well, there's really only one point where the x coordinate is equal to 1. And that's at the angle 0. Um, that's at the angle 0, because here it, cosine is equal to 0. Here it's negative 1. Here it's 0. So we can just say x is going to equal 0. And that's it. All right, so now let's get into, oh, that's equal to 1 half. My bad. That's going to change your answer a little bit. 
Good thing I noticed that like at the last second. OK, so now let's see when cosine is equal to 1 half, not 1. How, how did I miss that? So we know that here, my x is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So at our other angle, which is pi over 3, we know that x is equal to 1 half, right? Because the x and the y's are swapped here for pi over 3 compared to pi over 6. So then remember, okay, we say, OK, so cosine is equal to the angle pi over 3. And is there any other angles between 0 and 2 pi where it's also the angle also produces 1 half for the x coordinate? And that's going to be in all of your terms of pi over 3. It's going to be in the first and the second quadrant. That angle is 2 pi over 3. And if you're in a circle, you could see that that's, ooh, no, 1 half, positive. You could see that here, that's negative 1 half, the square root of 3 over 2. So the second quadrant actually doesn't work. We need to find it when cosine is positive, which would be in the fourth quadrant. So pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So my second angle is going to be 5 pi over 3. OK, so now we have one that's going to equal to 1. So let's go ahead and get to this problem here. So again, we're going to do basically the exact same thing I did in the last problem. We're going to, um, we're going to use the sum and difference formula. But now we have the sum and difference formulas for cosine. So I'm a, I know it's going to take a little bit of extra space. So I'm actually going to do this uh, down below here. OK, so what I, basically the cosine of the sum of two formulas is going to be the cosine of x times the cosine of pi over 4 minus the sine of x minus the sine of x minus the sine of x times the sine of pi over 4 minus, again, using my brackets. Now I'm using the difference formula, which is going to be the cosine of x times the cosine. And remember, that's pi over 4. It's not negative pi over 4 of pi over 4. And then that one's going to be plus plus sine of x times the sine of pi over 4. OK. So now let's go ahead and, and that equals 1. Ah, I'm running out of space. OK, so now let's go ahead and evaluate this. So the cosine of pi over 4 is going to be the square root of 2 over 2. So I have cosine of x, cosine of pi over 4. Again, if we go back to our unit circle, the only other angle we did not talk about was for what angle or what is, when is our angle equal to the um, pi over 4? Or what is our x coordinate? So pi over 4 produces the point square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2, x and y. So for both my solutions for x and y, I'm going to have square root of 2 over 2. So I have cosine of x times the square root of 2 over 2. Let's do this all in black. Cosine of x times square root of 2 over 2 minus the sine of x times square root of 2 over 2. And then again, make sure you distribute this. Okay, So since I'm going to distribute this, I'm going to use just a different sign just to remind myself that's what I did. Cosine of x um, times the square root of 2 over 2. And then this one is going to be now minus, so that's negative, and that's going to be negative. Sine of x times square root of 2 over 2. And this all equals 1. Now again, we have here, OK. So again, what you can see here is, again, my cosines Cosine of x squared of 2 over 2, those are going to add to 0. So now I have these two, which are the same. So it's going to be negative 2 sine of x times square root of 2 over 2 equals 1. Well, the 2 and the 2s, those are going to divide out, leave me with a negative sine of x times the square root of 2 equals 1. So now I can divide by a negative square root of 2. And I'll be left with the sine of x equals negative 1 over the square root of 2. Well, we don't like to have the square root of 2 in the denominator, so I'll multiply or I'll rationalize the denominator. And that's going to leave me with a negative square root of 2 over 2. So if we know it in the first quadrant, both the x and the y are positive, we need to figure out, well, when is the sine, when are we going to produce negative square root of 2 for the y coordinate? Well, that's going to have to be in the third and the fourth quadrant. So we say, well, that's pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. That one would be 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. 
So my two solutions here, again, what we're asking is sine of what angle produces a y coordinate, because it's sine of negative square root of 2 over 2. Well, that's going to be your two angles, 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So we can say x equals 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve your trigonometric equations using your half angle or sum and difference formulas. Thanks.